Meta just dropped Llama 4, and it has a 17 billion parameter model with 16 experts? Mmm, that doesn't sound right. Let me fix this real quick. Alright, let me redo the intro. <clears throat> oh my god, Llama 4 just dropped. It has a 109 billion parameters MOE model with 16 experts and 17B active parameters. After one year since Llama 3, hopefully it has been worth the wait. So this Llama 4 release is a bit special. Just like last time, there are three models in total, but these three models are nowhere near small. Back in Llama 3's release, we've had a Llama 3 8B, 70B, and a 405B dense model. Reasonable sizes for most major use cases, right? This time, however, Meta whipped out a 109 billion parameters mixture of experts model with 17 billion active parameters and 16 experts called Llama 4 Scout, a 400 billion parameters MOE model also with 17 billion active parameters but has 128 experts called Llama 4 Maverick, and a 2 trillion parameters MOE model with 288 billion active parameters and 16 experts called Llama 4 Behemoth that is still in training and not yet released. Their procedure seems to be a bit similar to Llama 3, so my guess is when Behemoth is done, it'll be released under Llama 4.1 along with updates for Scout and Maverick, which are also distilled models from Behemoth. If you're not too familiar with the difference between MOE and dense models, normally in a dense model, a single token would activate all parameters in a model. As for MOE, it is an architecture modified to have the model only activates a fraction of the total parameters, hence there is something called active parameters. This is achieved by having the model only only picking from a selection of feedforward networks called experts instead of just having one feedforward block that is always activated within a transformer block. These feedforward blocks is where a model stores its knowledge, and by only having a few experts activated once at a time, or in Llama 4's case, one expert and one shared experts activated, it can save compute while containing more knowledge compared to a typical dense model. So active parameters just refers to the parameters the active experts would have when working on predicting the next token, plus the rest of the parameters in the model that includes embedding and attention. What's also the highlight of Llama 4 is their use of a new attention technique which enables them to have a context window of up to 10 million tokens, basically 78 times larger than most of the OpenAI's models. But I'll probably talk about the technical details later down the line when their paper is released. And before I give you a brief overview on Llama 4 and why it is having such a controversial release even though its benchmarks is shockingly good, let me introduce you to Poppy AI, a platform that transforms how you interact with AI, making your creative process much more dynamic and visualized than ever before. Unlike traditional AI tools that confine you to linear text-based workflows, Poppy AI offers a Figma-like environment where you and your team can brainstorm, plan, and craft LLM workflows intuitively in real time. The coolest thing I have done with it is I can set it up to quickly collect information from multiple sources and hook it up with a chat where you can talk to all of them. In this case, I have it hooked up to all the subreddits I browse, which saves me the time having to look through all of them one by one to help me speed up my content creation process. So the limit of this AI whiteboard is literally your imagination. Not only does it let you drag and drop images, PDFs, or use your voice as input, you can also provide social media links like YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram and have it feed it directly to your chatbot interface. With Poppy AI consolidating all your media inputs and outputs in one place, streamlining how you use LLMs, saving you time and effort when you can quickly revisit, adjust, or redesign your pipeline, they enable you to forget how troublesome coding or setting your own AI pipeline really is. And the best part is that you can try Poppy AI risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and their team was even nice enough to give me a discount code BYCLOUD for $25 off on all plans. So check out Poppy AI using the link down in the description, and thank you Poppy AI for sponsoring this video. Anyways, aside from Llama 4 being a mixture of experts model, it is also a non-reasoning multimodal model trained from the ground up with text and images. But unlike Gemini and GPT-40, which can generate images, the Llama 4 series is only capable of visual understanding. Well, as of right now. While Llama 4 Scout and Maverick are both distilled from Behemoth, Llama 4 Scout did get a slightly better treatment of having a 10 million context window, which is also weird that Maverick did not get the same support while being bigger and better. My guess is that it might be because it's easier to scale up on smaller models. But this is the first ever high-performing Transformer model available with this insane context window, even though Google has teased this literally a year ago and so far have not released it. Llama 4's benchmark number 
Spurs look incredible too on the paper, scoring an insanely high 14-17 ELO on LM Arena, landing in second place, beating many top close source non-reasoning models, and now all of these capabilities are in the hands of the people. We have been blessed once again by the Zuck himself. On the other hand, some people did point out a few odd things about the model upon closer inspections, and with the fierce competition pressure coming from Deep Sea, could there have been some concerns about meta benchmark inaccuracies compared to what they officially reported or even having the symptoms of benchmark maxing. With this one Chinese rumor catching the main focus where they anonymously claim to have resigned from Meta Gen AI and accused that Meta has been training on the test data to get presentable results. So it is to no surprise that a lot of people find it underwhelming. But under the same thread, an actual Meta researcher replied, who has been handling the post-training of the two models, Gal and Maverick, claimed that their team would have never done that and asked for evidence from the anonymous poster, along with Meta's VP of Gen AI making a completely separate statement saying that they would never train on public test data on purpose, additionally claiming that the variable quality people are seeing is due to implementation or deployment error, so hopefully that is the case. But the practical evidence is stacking up heavily, which gives Llama 4 a really bad look. One of the biggest problems the new Llama 4 series have right now is that they are incredibly bad at instruction following. Not only do individual testers catch and not follow instructions on benchmarks, companies like Artificial Analysis have also stated that Llama 4's benchmarks results are much lower than Meta's claimed results, with the key reason being Scout and Maverick frequently fail to follow something as simple as an answer formatting instruction. On a very basic reasoning problem, the iconic how many R's are in the word strawberry, it straight up just failed. And this is done through Grok with a Q's deployment. For coding, it also failed the problem pretty much equivalent to strawberry question, but for coding. On Ader Bench, which is one of the highest regarded coding benchmark, it scored a low 15.6%, losing to DeepSeek v2.5 chat, an older version of DeepSeek v3. While Meta didn't specifically advertise it as a coding model, but it is a bit disappointing that it's this bad at coding because 10 million context window from Scout and 1 million context window from Maverick would have otherwise been perfect to be used for reading and summarizing a huge code base. Other than that, the context quality seems to suffer quite a bit. On my new favorite long context benchmark called Fiction Live Bench, where unlike Needle in a Haystack benchmark that has already been pretty much conquered by Llama 4 looking at Meta's official benchmark, Fiction Bench is a much more sophisticated benchmark where it tests LLM's comprehension instead of its searching ability over long context. Made by a website called Fiction.Live, which contains a lot of creative stories, their benchmark was designed to include tests on accurate summarization of character relationship change, plot progression, logical predictions based on established hints, and secrets told to the readers versus the ones that are unknown to the characters in the story. They deliberately designed hard questions that test understanding of subtext rather than information that can be searched for. So it requires the LLM to actually read and understand the full context rather than just search and focus on the relevant bits, which many LLMs are now optimized for and perform really well on. And this is so much more reflective of practical LLM use cases compared to finding needles in a haystack. I wish they would have ways to test out 1 million tokens, but the entire series of Harry Potter has barely over 1 million tokens, which makes finding sources to benchmark from without it being already trained on a lot harder. And it seems like expanding this is quite costly for them, so if you're interested in funding their benchmark, feel free to reach out to them. Anyways, if you look at the performance of Llama for Scout and Maverick, it instantly declined like crazy after the first 400 tokens, which is way too bad for a model trained for 1 million or even 10 million context window, respectively. So I really want to believe something is off about the deployment of Llama 4 models, because this is very bad for a model made for summarization. As for Gemini 2.5 Pro, it still has around 90% accuracy at 120k tokens, with no other models capable of reaching over 66% accuracy at 120k tokens. As for Arc AGI 2, Llama 4 Scout and Maverick both scored 0% and scored 0.5% and 4% respectively on Arc AGI 1. As for Math, even though Maverick scores around 95% on Math 500, on another math benchmark called Math Perturb, which is a data set to test to see if a model has generalizable mathematical reasoning capability or it is just memorizing problem solving skills, with DeepSeek R1 distilled Coin 1.5b outperforming it. Well, it is a reasoning model, but a 1.5 billion parameters outperforming it just does not look good. But hey, the model is scoring a record high 1417 ELO on Chatbot Arena. Isn't that a first for an open source model? Well, some people quickly realized that the Llama 4 on the LM Chatbot Arena speaks in a completely different style than the actual Llama 4 model 
models. And if you look closely at Lama 4's official benchmarks for top performance at lowest cost, it got a note saying that LM Arena testing was conducted using a version of Lama 4 Maverick optimized for conversations. So all we know is that they could be using a different system prompt or just a completely different instruction tuned model and being directly served from Meta, which performs very differently from the models they released. While they are technically not hiding the fact that they are using different models or system prompts, they are still being incredibly sneaky about it, which feels like we are being falsely advertised to, and some people are even calling them ELO maxing. So on top of all these things that piled up, including the lack of truthfulness in its announcement post, it made the community more disappointed than happy when open source is usually heavily celebrated. When I first saw their tweet, I actually thought for a second it was a 17 billion parameters model, until I read the phrasing, active parameters. That is definitely intentional. The only thing that seems to be working though is their vision understanding capabilities. It performs really well on Vista, which is a vision language understanding benchmark, and Maverick currently sits at number one for open source model. Meta's official benchmark also showed that their mass Vista has scored 70 for scale and 73 for Maverick, which is comparable to OpenAI 01 and Quent2 VL. So yeah, at the end of the day, I really hope this video will age like milk, because seeing Llama 4 like this definitely feels a bit weird. Maybe even more optimization and fixes will be introduced in the Llama 4.1 release. Like if you can ignore the part where it doesn't follow instructions, it seems like a pretty decent model, especially for open source. Maybe our standard has become really unrealistic thanks to DeepSeek. But since it's open source, that means everyone can fix it. So I'll still stay bullish on Meta and wait for the Behemoth release. If you want to run it, well, they did advertise Scout as a model that can fit into one GPU, but the one GPU will probably cost a few kidneys and you will only be able to run a Quant 4 version, not the full precision. So it would definitely be more dumb compared to how it was advertised as. And the thing about MOE model is that even though the active parameter count is low, you would still need to fit the entire model onto the memory to be able to use it. So having a low active parameter doesn't mean the memory requirement would be lower, it's just that it will use less compute power and that's it. Anyways, they did introduce some really interesting new techniques to extend the context window up to 10 million tokens, but I'll probably save it for the Llama 4 technical report or even a full paper like Llama 3, so subscribe to stay tuned. And if you enjoyed these types of cutting edge news, you should check out my newsletter where I cover the latest in the juiciest research papers that I might not have the time to cover in video. So if you enjoy learning about the cutting edge of AI, definitely give that a look. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.